Does your Minecraft city look like this when you want it to look like this? Well now, this is the video just for you because I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to make it look way better. Now, I know what you're thinking. Who is this guy on the internet to tell me how to make my builds better? Well, that's probably the most important thing about this game in my opinion because you can make your builds look however you would like, including your cities. So, if you want a really packed city, kind of like mine is right now, then go ahead and do that. Or if you want rundown buildings like this, which even I have, and go for it. It doesn't matter. It's how you want to play. But if you just want to improve your builds, it's a little bit better, then I'm going to be dropping you guys some tips. So stay tuned if you want to learn some things. Now, the core focus of this video will be on this street right here. And in this video, I will show you guys how to make building exteriors, make building interiors, and lastly, add life on your streets to make them feel just that much better. Alright, so now we're on to the very most important part. Well, um, second most important part of getting your builds actually down. First part is actually getting an area set out for your build. And now second, uh, keep in mind the area where you're putting your build or about how big you want it to be exactly. So for example, over here, as you can see, we have a nice little array of shapes in different sizes. So this one goes, it's about a medium sized build, I would say. Then it goes into a large build. Then it goes into a relatively tinier build, which uh, honestly I would have put about, about, uh, about right here in this case. Uh, over here is probably a better example. We go relatively tiny to medium to large to small to a uh, medium once again to small, small, large. So keep in mind the shapes. You want a lot of different shapes because what looks more interesting. Uh, looking at a street that's all same size builds. So like a bunch of these or a nice variety like this. So that's the first thing you want to consider. Uh, second thing and uh, arguably just as important if not a little more. You want a good build palette. Now, uh, I made the unfortunate mistake of asking the server uh, what my build palette should be. If you have uh, friends, you should do that too. Because it offers a good challenge sometimes. They said, quote, cyan blocks. So, uh, the copper is going to be the light blue or oxidized copper. So, that's basically cyan. And everything else, it says cyan in the name. Uh, except for the warp stems and I don't have sea lanterns but sea lanterns are prismarine and the glass but everything else is cyan so cue the time lapse because i'm going to show you guys just what you can do with any basically any block you can make a building block by the way or make a part of a palette so i like showing off my creativity and let me show you guys something i can do with such a simple such a one note palette shall i so I'm starting off this build with a shulker box ring as the base layer to create a nice ring around the exterior of the build, cutting out space and making mental notes of areas where doors and stuff should go as I build. After that, I begin making pillars upwards. These will dictate the height I want this build to be. I wanted a taller one, so in this case I did 20 blocks high. These also help in adding some depth, making the walls a bit less flat. I then begin to start a basic gradient, darks at the bottom and slowly going lighter as I go up, giving a nice effect. After that, I begin on the wall once again, slowly going up, mixing in the different shades and texturing, trying to make an eye-catching wall that makes your eyes go from the bottom and go up. Now I am adding the floor, which is a good time to note that your floors and interior walls should almost never be matching with your exterior walls. That's why I'm using wool in this case. And after that, I am just retexturing the last of the walls to make the warped fungus go into the concrete just a little bit nicer. Now is my favorite part, adding detail to the exterior. I went with something basic with the blocks, warped wood, fences, and slabs, as well as copper that will oxidize slowly to get blue like the rest of the build. This step is the best because you can use so many blocks that you might not think would work together in unison to create something nice. Now for the most important area in my opinion though, the wall above your door. I like having a more grand looking pattern, or at least a different pattern than the rest of them, on the center because it makes the main door feel way more special than it would be otherwise. I also decided I didn't like the windows too much, which was a good decision because these new windows look so much better, I think. Then finally, I get to the roof, the part that can make or break a build. I did a safer flat roof, since in most cities anyway, pitched roofs don't really exist, I find. So with this, 
The shop exterior is complete. Okay, so we have the build here. Uh, that's step one. Uh, side note, I actually really do how this came out. Do like how this came out, pardon me. Um, but in here, now for the now for the little bit harder part, actually putting an interior in your Minecraft city builds. Um, so, yeah, you can have as many builds as you want, but if you don't have actual interiors inside them, then this makes your... I picked the wrong one, this one. Then it just makes your city look dead and uh, not as cool as it could be. So you got like pizza shops, yarn stores, um, bakeries, action figure shops, whatever you want. Uh, plant shops, I don't know, I almost said bakery again. But you can literally think of a, if you have a shop IRL or a made up shop like potions or something. Not that potions don't exist IRL. But make wherever you want. If you want to be a sword seller, go ahead. If you want to sell skulk, if you want to sell wardens, you can sell literally anything. So just to give you some ideas, I'm going to be doing a few interiors. Won't be time-lapse styled, but I have uh, about four interiors I need to do right now on this block. So hopefully I can give you guys some, well, inspiration. And I'll even show off some of my older ones too, because why not? So now the first interior will go from this and turn into this. The second one will come from this and it becomes this. Um, maybe I should have went for fish instead of scarves. I'll be honest. This is, this is how I feel about making this actually. I wasn't supposed to have this skin on still, but it makes it funnier now that I do. And lastly, the last one we'll make will come from this and become Quite possibly the best of them all. This, a nice little party store. And now for this last little segment, I'm just gonna be showing off a few of the builds that I've done in the past, just to maybe give you some ideas on what you can do in your cities. Enjoy. First we have this photography slash camera shop. Then we have a magic selling shop. Some type of bar with good theming. This one in particular is a beach bar. We can have simple ice cream shops and even complicated tailoring shops with masks included. We've got fresh honey from a bee cafe and even the freshest of ingredients from the underworld. You can have a pizza shop or even a record store. And to all you book nerds out there, build a library. You can even have a plant shop to sell all the beautiful flowers. And finally, if you're really strapped for ideas, then just do a basic bakery. You can never go wrong with those. And you can build plenty of them because you can do cookies, bread, cakes. You can bake anything and get away with it. Now, one thing you guys might have noticed is the fact that I'm using a ton of armor stands and custom heads in my city. Now, I personally recommend that if you do have a custom head model or a custom armor stand making, tool. I recommend highly to use it if you're building a city because it lets you do all kinds of things such like this and um, everything else you've seen up to this point to be honest if you looked back at that little time lapse I did. But they add so much life and so much more character to your builds instead of just having them be empty shells and even then if they have uh, just like empty seating it's a little boring and not, that's not even counting the streets because uh, look at the streets it makes them so much, so much more alive. You see, you see people actually working on them and uh, citizens living out their lives and such. So, I think an armor stand mod is very important. I know some of you bedrock people can't have it, which is unfortunate. But, if the marketplace has one, I have no idea because I don't play bedrock. Get it, please. And if you have a head mod, even better because you can only do so much with Steve heads everywhere, unfortunately. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you guys learned something new today, please consider subscribing, as it helps out my channel a lot, and it makes me happy seeing number get big. It makes Cave and Brain happy seeing Cave, <laughs> seeing number get bigger. That's what I'm trying to say. Ah, words hard, guys. I know, I know. It's a gosh darn tragedy. Also, I added ants here because sprinkly looking floor. Don't know if I mentioned that in that last clip. But thank you so much for watching. Much love from Beta OG signing out. Thank you for watching.